Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Shruti Bajaj, Director and Consultant Clinical Geneticist at the Purple Gene Clinic, Mumbai. In today's YouTube session, we are going to try and understand what is the role of genetics in cerebral palsy. Firstly, let's try and understand what is cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy, as we know, is a disorder of the motor function which occurs due to an injury or an insult to the developing brain. It's relatively common, known to occur in nearly 3 to 4 per thousand live births in India. The cerebral palsy or CP, as we call it in abbreviation, CP can often be associated with seizures, intellectual disability, some sensory impairments and so on. The traditionally known causes of cerebral palsy include a perinatal insult, perinatal asphyxia where the child does not cry at birth, extreme prematurity, intraventricular hemorrhage, maternal or perinatal severe infections. These are the well-known causes associated with cerebral palsy. But do you know, in 20% of the cases, there is no cause identified and the child still develops cerebral palsy. So, uh, as the understanding of genetics is expanding, we are now being able to solve this enigma to some extent. You'd be surprised to know as per a recent publication by Chopra et al. in 2022, nearly 25% of the cerebral palsy has an underlying genetic etiology caused due to a single gene disorder. In fact, this percentage could be as high as in 30% in those individuals where we don't have a cause. So 30% of the individuals with CP who don't have an obvious reason could actually be having an underlying genetic error. Uh, why should we be picking up these genetic cases of cerebral palsy early? Well, of course, some of them could be treatable. 67 of the 110 inborn errors of metabolism which can cause CP are actually treatable. Of course, uh, this is very helpful for those families who are planning another child and don't want the same genetic disorder to recur in the next pregnancy. Sometimes arriving at a diagnosis is also helpful because we can help to prognosticate the disorder, explain to the family what exactly it is that has caused CP in your child and how can you minimize the complications. And what are the red flags that we should keep in mind, which are some early red flags for genetic contribution to cerebral palsy? Well, the common ones are more than one affected member in the family having cerebral palsy, uh, losing the milestones after gaining them, what we call as neuroregression, atypical MRI findings, absence of any typical history of perinatal insult, uh, extreme hypotonia, facial dysmorphism, to name a few. Uh, we'd be happy if you have any query regarding this topic. You can always write to us. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.